Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing subgroups. Okay, right, so we're currently in the process of discussing uh, the subgroups of the group of integers under addition. Now, what we've discussed so far is that all of the subgroups of the group of integers under addition are of this form a times z, where a is some non-negative integer. Okay, now what does a, z actually mean? Well, it refers to the set containing all integer multiples of this non-negative integer that you've chosen, a, basically. Okay, so it will consist of 0, a, negative a, 2a, negative 2a, 3a, negative 3a, etc. Okay, and what we've shown is that all of these um, subsets that you construct by taking a as a uh, non-negative integer, they are all subgroups of the integers under addition. And what is more, that there are no other subgroups of the integers under addition that is not one of these, basically. Okay, right. So what we now want to turn our attention to is uh, proving that, with the exception of 0z, which is the uh, subgroup which consists of just the identity element 0 in a set by itself, all the other subgroups of this form, all the other subgroups of the integers under addition, in fact, are, are actually isomorphic to the group of integers under addition. So they're isomorphic to their parent group, to the bigger group that they themselves are a subgroup of. Now you might think, well, that's just a bizarre concept, because isomorphism, doesn't that mean that basically the two groups are the same, other than the fact that you're using different symbols, okay? Uh, and yes, it does mean that. Uh, so you might think that that's surely impossible for a subgroup to be isomorphic to its uh, the group that it's a subgroup of, okay? And I'd say you're absolutely right, your intuition's exactly right for finite group theory, okay? It would be impossible for uh, a subgroup of a finite group to be isomorphic to the group that it's a subgroup of. However, in infinite group theory, that's not the case, and the group of integers under addition is an infinite group. So really, your intuition is correct for finite groups, which are obviously based on finite sets, but is wrong for uh, infinite groups, which are based on infinite sets. And the confusion here, the non-intuitive part of this, is the same non-intuitive part that comes up in infinite set theory, where basically uh, the cardinality of the entire integers is the same as the cardinality of just the even integers, even though intuitively the size of the even integers would be uh, half the size of the um, of the set containing all integers. Okay, so uh, let's go on to another page and discuss this in more detail. So what I am saying is that AZ is actually isomorphic to the entire uh, group of integers under addition, provided that a is not equal to zero. Okay, so for all a is an element of the natural numbers, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., but not for zero. Of course, when a was equal to zero, that gave us the trivial subgroup, which just contained the identity element, and that's certainly not isomorphic to the uh, group of integers. Okay, right. So, to prove this then, all I need to do is find you an isomorphism, this relabeling map that relabels the entries of this group with the entries of this group, okay? And then I've proven that the two groups are isomorphic, okay? And this is actually very, very easy. So remember what AZ really is. AZ is this set consisting of all uh, integer multiples of A. So it consists of all things of the form Z times A, where A is an element of... The, oh, whoops, not like that. No, A is a natural number, where Z is an element of the integers. Okay? Right. So my mapping, my isomorphism, phi, which is going to map you from this subgroup AZ onto the group Z is quite simply going to be the mapping that takes an arbitrary element in this um, group here, okay, and an arbitrary element in this group is of the form Z times A, okay, as I've just explained there, and it will take this element just onto the integer Z, okay? So, for instance, if we have the element 4A, which is in AZ, okay, it will take it onto 4, Okay, if you have the element negative 2a, it will take it onto negative 2. 
So it just returns the element onto uh, the integer that you multiplied by a to get the new element, basically. Okay, right. Uh, so to, give, to make this absolutely concrete, let me do an example, a concrete example. So let's think in terms of um, the subgroup 2z. Okay, in this case, what would phi do? What would map uh, any element of 2z? Now, any element of 2z, let's just go over what the elements of 2z are. So you have 0, 2, negative 2, 4, negative 4, uh, 6, negative 6, etc. Okay, and what it would do effectively is it's dividing all of them by a. That's another way you could view this. Okay, it's taking z times n, it's dividing it by a uh, to get you to z, basically. Okay, right. So in this case, a is equal to 2. So really what you can view it doing is taking any element of this group here and dividing it by 2 and mapping it onto x over 2, basically. So it's just going to halve these all down. It will take 2 onto 1, it will take negative 2 onto negative 1, 4 onto 2, negative 4 onto negative 2, 6 onto 3, negative 6 onto negative 3, etc. Okay, so that's really what it's doing. It's undoing the multiplication by a, basically. Okay, right. So that is a bijective map. It's going to be 1 to 1, okay? Every uh, element in AZ will be mapped onto one element in Z, and every integer here will only have a single element coming from here being mapped onto it. So it is injective, and it's also subjective, because any integer that you have in this one here, okay, in the codomain, will have something over here being mapped onto it. So it is bijective, it is a nice relabeling map that will just relabel the elements here with elements here, basically. Okay, now all we need to prove is that that incredibly important property of isomorphisms holds true. Now, what is the incredibly important property of isomorphisms? Well, it is that composition is the same at the, between the two uh, groups that you are mapping um, that the mapping is between, basically. Okay, so isomorphism says that phi of little x composed with little y is equal to phi of little x composed with phi of little y. Okay, and really remember what this means is that the two composition tables are the same, basically. Okay, this is saying that when you relabel up the entries in the composition table in one, it turns it into the entries in the composition table of the other. Okay, so, at the moment this is written in terms of abstract composition, but we have some specific groups here, and in these groups, composition is called addition, so let's replace abstract composition with addition. Okay, so here, this means add the two elements together in this group here, the domain of the isomorphism, okay? And then here, this means compose them together in the codomain, okay? But again, that's still called addition, so it will be 5 of x plus 5 of y here. Okay, so that's what we need to prove. Okay, right. Uh, so, let's start by taking some arbitrary elements of our... Um, group AZ, of our subgroup AZ. So some arbitrary elements of our subgroup AZ will be of the form ZA, and we can call the other one Z prime A. So basically, because all elements of AZ are of this form, some integer times A, what I can say is an arbitrary element of this group here will be of this form Z times A, and again, this arbitrary element here can be Z prime A. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the mapping of Z A plus Z prime A. And I need to combine those together first. Okay, so what's the combination of these two together? Well, of course, we can now just factor out the A. So we'll get that this is Z plus Z prime times A. Okay? Uh, and then when we do phi of this, what's this going to be mapped onto? Well, it will just be mapped onto z plus z prime, just using what I defined my phi to be equal to. It takes an integer times a to whatever the integer is, basically. And in this case, it's z plus z prime. Okay, right. Then we need to prove that this is going to be equal to what we'd get if we took phi of this arbitrary element x 
and phi of the arbitrary element, element y and then added them together. So we need to prove that this is equal to phi of z of a uh, plus phi of z prime a. Okay, like so. Uh, now phi of z a, just using this mapping here, will be equal to z and phi of z prime a will be equal to z prime and then you're going to add them together okay in this group here but of course that addition there is exactly the same as the addition that we performed here basically okay and so these two sides are indeed equal to one another so i've found an isomorphism basically uh, between uh, my subgroup az and my parent group z Okay, and all it basically does is divides all of the elements here by a and returns all of the elements to uh, just the integer that was multiplied by a to create that element. Okay, and it's saying that the composition law in this one is mirroring the composition law here, except for the fact that all of the integers are multiplied by a. And that's really just because when you add any two arbitrary elements in az together, like so, the way that you do it is really just by factoring out the a and then adding the coefficients, which are just integers. So that's really the intuitive reason why these two groups are actually uh, so related to one another. They are um, realizations of the same algebraic structure. Okay, so that now concludes our discussion of subgroups.